Welcome everyone to the Nerd Nook. I'm your host Evan Teague and with my colleagues is the man who was recently upgraded to Executive Creative Director of YouTube, Noah Bailey. <laughs> that was a no way true. <laughs> <laughs> I have no... <laughs> oh my gosh. No. Cool though, I guess. <laughs> it is cool though, it is cool though. Um, but yeah, I kind of going off that, I want to start off today with the fact that Apparently, sometime last year, Dave Filoni was officially given the title of Executive Creative Director at Lucasfilm. Yeah, I, as it should be. Like, <laughs> Kathleen Candy didn't lose her job. Yeah. She's still there. Yeah. To the, you know, chagrin of many people, I'm sure. But like, <laughs> <laughs> Dave Filoni is also having a high ranking position there when yeah. everything he's ever done is a win. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as you should reward those and like promote, you know, because I mean, the dude is basically the face of Star Wars. He's the most, the only real person outside of like George Lucas who's the face of Star Wars right now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, yeah, as it should be. Like you said, everything he touches. Touch did gold. you say he used to work on a uh, Last Airbender as well? He did. He yeah. did. So okay, you yeah, know, a trend of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> doing well. <laughs> you know, so, Clone Wars you know. obviously, you know, fantastic. Mandalorian, fantastic. Bad Batch is like pretty decent so far. Like pretty just, solid, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like you know, like, like I don't we're, think, we're on a roll. Rebels personally, have, I don't know, think can... I necessarily like Bad Batch as much as I did Clone Wars right now. Mm -hmm. But I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, it's still good. And I'm, you know, we're only a couple episodes in, and like obviously we're in like the filler. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, when things kind of start hitting the fan, I think it's going to be a lot yeah. more enjoyable. Yeah, but like even then, this filler I think is better than a lot of the Clone Wars filler because there's like half of Clone Wars that is unwatchable. <laughs> oh, no, there's a couple arcs right off the top of my head, like the droid arc with like all those like R2 droids. There's so many dumb droid episodes. <laughs> that arc, any Jar Jar episode. There's one where he teams up with Mace Windu that's not terrible. <sighs> yeah, but it's hard to take it seriously because Jar Jar is some. Whenever Jar Jar's yeah. in the episode, Jar Jar's never like minorly in it if jar jar's in the episode it's a jar jar episode there's no like oh, there, there is also jar -Jar. that one where like they visit the like jar jar's clan and count dooku shows up at the end and him and anakin have a fight that was fun <laughs> yeah, yeah that's kind of cool but yeah, again like it's only at the very end is it any good <laughs> right right it's like is it really worth the whole and granted it's only 22 minutes not two and a half hours like the movies so True. it's not as big of an investment <laughs> but still i mean but I yeah, I mean, Clone Wars has so many arcs that are just like, you know, excellent. You know, even you know, even when you have like in with season seven, when you have that kind of middle arc, which most people would agree was a not great, but you kind of forgot about it because we go into Mandalore yeah. right after. So yeah. it's like, oh yeah, totally. That's that's mm -hmm. what I wanted to see. You know, could it have only been like an eight episode season? <clears throat> Probably, but you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I do think those episodes were one of them wasn't necessary at all but like the like the ones surrounding that one were were necessary because to kind of see what ahsoka was up to and how she yeah. got to where she got in yeah uh, i feel like that could have been like it was i think it was four episodes it could have honestly been two yeah but that third episode in there like literally no, they that, ended up in the same spot where they started <laughs> starts in prison gets out then all this goes right back to prison like really back to I'm like that was literally like the equivalent of go back three spaces from monopoly it was mm. like are you serious right now <laughs> but but you know aside, you know yeah for the most part clone wars absolutely great mm -hmm. mandalorian i mean top shelf stuff they yeah. what he's doing. Just give the man his, just give the man his movies. Like I don't see why not at this point. I yeah, don't like I don't I, understand it. I don't I'm not sure if he technically is on like the same level as David Feige. Sorry, Kevin Feige uh, at a that um Marvel, mm -hmm. but like he's in sure, that yeah. echelon. Yeah. Like like that's yeah, that's where he should be. Like still being able to focus on directing uh you know the shows that he's working on but have oversight and just being able to to, to make the right decisions where they need right to yeah right because i mean honestly because i know like the ahsoka show is coming like mm -hmm. that's obviously he's gonna have his hand all up in that because that's kind of his character mm -hmm. and like you know and you know obviously obi-wan is coming soon and that's gonna be big but it's yeah. also like i don't know like i and i know this is kind of this is kind of a thing in general but it's like i hate when like 
with people feel like we have to have movie directors direct movies instead of just people who just get the content. It kind of just doesn't. Mm-hmm. I've never understood that because the same can be said with like DC and like all these other things where it's just like, just have people that you know that know these characters and know these stories. Just put it on the big screen. I mean, they can well, handle it. Like it'll be fine. Especially when Mandalorian's budget's TV- huge. I know that a TV show is a very different beast than a movie. Like they are built very differently, but I think if Paul Dini and Bruce Tim wanted to make a Batman movie, you know, live action Batman movie, they would be good at it. <laughs> like, I don't think it would be terrible. I think it, it might not be perfect, but right. I think it would still be done very well. Yeah, because I mean, I believe at least one of them was spearhead Mass of the Phantasm which is great just do that live action boom there you go (laughs) there you go and that's what i'm saying like i don't think they would try to do a lot of unnecessary stuff or put their own little personal spin on it or add some unnecessary background info on a character that's not even relevant or accurate at all and just like change lore places that's not necessary exactly or have wasted characters that just have that name because you know who that guy is and all this stuff so Mm -hmm. it's like just do it how it needs to be done. Yeah, a lot of these animated movies, like Mask of the Phantasm, Under the Red Hood, Dark Knight Returns, just take it, live action, go. And I know there's more to it than that, but is there though? Like, well, I mean, I've said this before. I would even argue just make and just make movie like what big screen budget animated movies. I think that would also be pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> I personally think animated is the best format for superheroes anyway. Yeah, but, comic book. But because live action make more money, blah, blah, blah. Which is like, true. Yeah. Sucks. Which I, mean, I still don't get it because it's like, I mean, if it looks that good. Because it's like, other than like Pixar and Disney movies, it's like, if it's animated, it's not going to sell. Which is just kind of. Yeah. Like the occasional DreamWorks movie gets, gets up there, but like Into the Spider-Verse should have made a billion dollars. Yes. It didn't. Um, Whatever. In a world where Aquaman can make a billion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, like Into the Spider Verse definitely could. But then again, is Into the Spider like, but Into the Spider Verse doesn't like, that's one of those movies that like, it would be hard to put in live action because like, there's oh, so yeah, much, yeah, like color, so much like comic book stuff that, in the movie. That is that my prime see. example of animation is like the ideal way to, to do superhero right. movies. It's the comic book movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, I don't know. if Dave, like, if Dave Filoni, I think, even though he is executive, you know, director at Lucasfilm now, if he wants to actually make a Star Wars movie in whatever era he wants, preferably, you know, one set in the Clone Wars, just to kind of flesh out the era even more. Boom. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Do it. I would. I definitely watch that. Or just yeah, it's like. Especially like, and I, that's how I kind of like, like when I watch like shows like Mandalorian and like mm-hmm. these, you know, old one come because it's like it's bridging the gap between live action movies and like shows, even if they're live, you know, they're live action shows, but still like closer to, you know, it's get it's bridging that gap kind of. So then it's like, okay, well, if you can make, you know, a multiple season miniseries live action that's you know making all this money has this much budget. You know, maybe if we do give them a little more budget, they can make a movie. You know, just make basically just throw two Mandalorian, two or three Mandalorian episodes together. You got a movie. So yeah, it doesn't even need to like be some big grand adventure. Just yeah, just like a bigger episode of Mandalorian. And that's yeah. that's. I mean, if you yeah. think about it, you could like if you have a like you have a season as it's eight episodes. If you have them like three episodes, two episodes, three episodes, then it's like trilogy boom mm-hmm. like i don't know like you know there'd be more to it you have to make them a little more rounded individually but it's like you could i mean you could yeah. make that work mm-hmm. it would make more sense than some of these other ones like. true <laughs> um so kind of like paired with this like official announcement it was also officially announced that uh you know there are several project star wars projects still in development including star wars the acolyte which I am still very, very excited about. That's the show <laughs> with the, like the 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 Sith, like kind of rising back up after, you know, being gone for thousands of years. That just sounds cool. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Ahsoka show, obviously. Yep. They did say that um, the Rangers of the New Republic is not currently in active development, mm-hmm. implying 
that was going to be Gina Carano's show. That, yeah. And I think we kind of, yeah. 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 Um, she had just stopped using Twitter for like a day. You know, she might have still been around, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> like, I, I always kind of felt like Cobb Vance, the guy from the episode one of season two of Mandalorian, he... Mm-hmm. Like, I, I always thought, like, that episode was kind of a backdoor pilot for something he would be in. So, like, been, yeah. Yeah, I think either he is going to replace her or he was going to be in that show anyway. I, I think if that was the case, just kind of focus more on him uh, or have him have his own show. Like, I think that, I think that can be an easy kind of pivot off of. Yeah, try to, that. try to, yeah, try to make that work. But they might have to, I don't know, because they might have, to, maybe they'll reintroduce some new characters also. But it kind of feels like, yeah, because I, I feel like, do you think he'd be enough to be his own, like, main character, or would they have to have him with, like, a group of people, maybe? I think a group of people, because he's yeah. called the Rangers of the New Republic, right. I think. Uh, that being said, I don't think Gina Carano or Cara Doom, whoever, could have um, carried their own show. <laughs> don't think so? Yeah. She could barely carry the episode. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Like, I, like maybe maybe my uh my, maybe my opinions of her, the character have kind of been jaded by the actions of the actress but I, even even during season one when i didn't know much about Gina carano i always felt like her parts were weaker than the whole um but uh, maybe with a different director or just with her own you know given more time with mm-hmm. the show she could have shown more but yeah. oh well yeah, I mean, and to be honest, I mean, they've got so much <laughs> other content coming. I feel like, you know, if this one show doesn't come through, I don't think everyone's going to be like, no, now there's no Star Wars content. Like, you know, like, show on Cassie and Andor. That's what I'm like, saying. <laughs> for some reason. Is and, you know, Andor's getting his own thing, who, again, I forgot who that was until mm-hmm. I saw the picture. So, <laughs> you know, if he's getting his own thing, I think I think we'll be okay. We've got mm-hmm. so much other stuff going on. We'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there's a ton of Star Wars content in the future, uh, you know, with at least some or most of it being spearheaded by Dave Filoni, again, which is ideal. Um, moving on to Marvel stuff, that Eternals trailer dropped uh, yesterday, mm-hmm. and it was pretty good. It was. It was. Thoughts. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was really cool. I loved, like, they kind of just had this, like, they really went in with, like, just the ambience of, like, we are higher. We are just, like, Mm -hmm. basically gods just kind of, like, around. I thought it was very, like, like, it didn't explain a lot because you you know how a lot of Marvel trailers for characters you don't know, you're kind of just like, I don't know what's happening, but I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt. You know, it was kind of like when I saw like the Captain Marvel trailer for the first time, I was kind of like, I don't know anything that's happening, but I'm kind of here for it. So it's like, yeah, yeah, that's kind of how I feel right now. So I'm up for it. Yeah, I honestly think that this trailer, uh, like I think when making this movie, they set out to make just like Chloe Zhao set out to make a Chloe Zhao movie that is based on Marvel characters which isn't normally the way directors make movies. Like even, even Guardians, of the, of Guardians of the Galaxy, like James Gunn is a, is a crazy man. <laughs> like if any of his movies outside of Guardians movies are insane. <laughs> Whereas Guardians is clearly he's scaled back quite a bit. So mm-hmm. it kind of ended up being like a Marvel movie with some James Gunn flair in there, but it's not a James Gunn movie. Whereas... Suicide Squad is a James Gunn movie, you know? (laughs) Um, Whereas here, Chloe Zhao clearly, like, I'm just going to make my kind of movie and you're going to call it a Marvel movie and that's going to be okay. And this trailer proved to me that it is going to be okay. (laughs) Like, it doesn't feel anything like any other Marvel movie we've ever had. The colors are drastically different. The atmosphere, the vibes, just everything about it. Like we barely even saw any superhero action in this trailer, yet it kind of blew me away. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it was it, like you said, like the vibe, and also yeah, like just how it like present. It was kind of like how it presented itself. It kind of just had this like glory esque like mm-hmm. kind of thing. It was just really yeah. It was really like it was like okay, like this is obviously uncharted territory. We don't know what this is, but it looks awesome. 
So I'm like, yeah, I yeah. want to see it. I thought, you know, at the end where they bring in the Eternals, how they did that was really cool. How they had like the letters like come together, and I was kind of like, oh. I do find it hilarious though that this trailer confirmed that even though they've been around for thousands of years, they just kind of let a Thanos happen. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like yeah. they're we- choosing now. To, to to get involved when which Thanos... is kind of funny which is kind of like okay what's bigger than thanos trying to like take destroy the universe that you were like all right i'm getting up like you know it's like it's like waiting until after the kid like kills the other kid to be like okay maybe they need a timeout it's yeah. like i mean we've kind of already i assume like because the eternals are so you know are so powerful and are are so like ethereal i assume it's gonna be like multiple thanos level threats all at the same time mm. <laughs> like apparently in the comics these journals have this like dark counterpart to them that were created around the same time that are just evil versions of like evil like versions of them and thanos mm. like is like a cousin to he's like kind of one of them thanos is a weird guy <laughs> he's like kind of one of them so if like even two of them at once would be a big deal like yeah that Okay. I'll check out. Okay. Yeah, that could be something. This uh, this almost kind of has like a Greek mythology vibe to it, mm-hmm. kind of feel. So like I think that's kind of why I kind of liked it off the back. So I was like, oh, this is like you know we're coming off Olympus finally to like do something. I'm like, okay, this is I could I can get behind. Yeah. Yeah. Like I I feel like most like most trailers for like for example Shang Shang Chi Shang Chi I think is how it's actually pronounced. It, the, the initial trailer kind of made it look like it was kind of doing its own thing. Like it was like kind of trying to break away from the general Marvel formula. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling that's going to be more or less like <clears throat> not a paint by numbers Marvel movie, but it, it's going to hit most of the same beats that we know mm-hmm. from Marvel stuff. Um, I, I legitimately think the Eternals is going to be its own thing completely. Not is not going to have like the Marvel feel to it pretty much at all is just going to be this ensemble cast with that also happen to have superpowers fighting people and doing things that exist in Marvel comics, but in, in a way we've never seen before. And I, I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of its own format, just <laughs> doing way. And I think that works well because we're with characters we've also never seen before. So mm. I think that'll be <clears throat> like, you know, just, okay. We'll be able to just accept this as its own thing. Yes exactly as just as long as they like in the movie have a good explanation as to why they didn't get involved when thanos was around um yeah i think think it's gonna be pretty good like i was not not that i wasn't excited but i i never really like i I never knew enough about the eternals to get excited but now i am pretty excited yeah yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, I don't know anything about, you know, it's kind of you know, like with Guardians of the Galaxy back, you know, back in like, what was it, 2014 or mm-hmm. something? It's like, you know, I know none of those characters at all. But yeah. if it's a good movie, it's a good movie. And I'm yeah. kind of having to say, yeah, it's like, we'll see how this goes. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know any of these people, but, you know, it looks dope. Yeah. Um, yeah, last little bit of Disney news, kind of news I have is, it seems like every like three months there's a rumor that Disney is planning on buying DC Comics. <laughs> that would cost them a lot. Not that they, I don't think it's for sale. I... Well, here's the thing. Like I said, it's it's been rumored like every three months or so that that Warner Brothers or sorry that AT and T is trying to sell off like DC comics to somewhere like this like unprofitable to the point where they're trying to sell them off or something it n- clearly hasn't happened yet but because of the the Warner Discovery merger that's happening soon this get their foot in the door <laughs> if there was ever a time to do it I guess now would be the time oh if you God. for some reason wanted to sell off you know some of the most iconic characters and properties of all time but. yeah especially in the superhero era i mean you know like i i as much as i feel that I kind of like especially with like the dceu the characters are not being utilized properly mm-hmm. i would not want that to happen because like if disney owns every like 
this is like whatever and this is just with any business and any kind of thing whenever someone owns everything the quality usually takes a nose down. oh yeah because they don't have to mm -hmm. that's that's part of the reason why this, this will never happen disney would have to sell off marvel to acquire right. disney or sorry to acquire dc because that would break monopoly laws for a couple of reasons a they already are like on the brink they own 39 percent of the film industry 40 percent is technically a monopoly when it comes to like mm -hmm. from a bit like from a like technical standpoint um so they already like we're already technically getting less movies per year because one company can't produce more than x number of movies per year so because you know because oh. they bought up fox they can't release as many fox so fox can't year. release as many movies as they used to be oh or i guess God. they're technically it's technically the 20th century studios now right whatever <laughs> I, I like that fox logo anyway <laughs> uh but so if if they purchase dc from warner brothers that would be another like if they were to release any dc superhero movies any given year that would be one less other brand of movie they could release let alone there aren't that many other notable superhero comic companies outside of like, I guess, Dark Horse and Image, but like not outside of Invincible, spawning Hellboy, like who cares about yeah, them? Like, you know, <laughs> and like not nearly as household name as no. Marvel. Like not even. I mean, hey, Invincible, you never know. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's one character. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's not even. I know. I know. Just yeah. So. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> as I cool, would. as theoretically as cool as it would be to have an Avengers versus Justice League movie, like even if it's like make it not canon, bring everybody, like bring just for one movie, bring back Iron Man and and, Cap and uh, you know Steve Rogers Iron Man or yeah, Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans back just for one more movie so they can fight whoever in the DC universe. Like sure, that'd be awesome, but it's not happening. No. That would be crazy and like the crazy crossover, but they what? I, no, I just that wouldn't happen. Like that no. just doesn't. <laughs> so like, so yeah, like if unless this does somehow actually go through, I could honestly I could see Warner Discovery selling off the DC property or like DC properties. I could see that happening. As a, I could see that having happening at a higher percent chance more than disney buying it from them mm -hmm. like i could easily see them selling it off but i wouldn't i don't think disney could buy it i don't know who would buy dc from them if anyone but yeah i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know but yeah i can't yeah i mean even if yeah there's no way that wouldn't mm -hmm. but yeah i mean if they do really i mean if they really do sell dc comics i mean hopefully whoever does take them up will just kind of I don't know, just try to, oh, I don't know, like, just not change too much, but, like, I don't know, it'd be hard. Change stuff know. for the better, I guess? Yeah, or, like, keep what's working mm -hmm. and try to change up what's not really working. Yeah. Which, you know, I know, is as vague as it gets, but still. Yeah. Um, to kind of springboarding off that, another nerd news. Um, uh Injustice, Gods Among Us, is getting an animated movie. Ooh. So Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. I know, you know, obviously, you know, there's two Injustice games. There's also a pretty extensive uh, comic series based in that world. Um, yeah. Like that. Yeah, I'm definitely for that. That sounds great because, you know, again, yeah, and yes, I know, you know, Evil Superman has been done to death, but at the same time, it's a popular enough game. They have comics, like you said. Like, yeah, make it a movie, especially if it's going to be animated, which you know is the superior, you know, mm. format, as some would say. So it's like, yeah, go for it. It should be fun. For the record, Injustice kind of started the major trend of turning Superman evil. Like he, mm. there were obviously you know comics before then where that idea was was thrown around with Ultraman. Uh, you know, the other dimensions, Superman and the mm -hmm. uh, whatnot, but like, you know, Poison Ivy, mind controlling him. Like, there are other instances of a character named Superman or Superman like character turning evil in DC comics. 
mm-hmm. at least for a little, at least for like a time. But Injustice really like started getting that going and like, like main, like it really started the zeitgeist of the modern era of that happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I wouldn't put it, I, I wouldn't like put it against them to do it again. Right. Like, right. Yeah. It's like, especially, you know, they start, you know, this isn't their fresh idea. This happened years ago. Cause I think the yeah. first Injustice game is like 2013. Oh, wow. Really? That whole mm-hmm. thing. Okay. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's been, you know, they, this has been an idea almost 10 years ago. So like, you know, it's not like, oh yeah, prove that's original. Like, Hey man, this is just, <laughs> but yeah, I'd yeah. definitely like to see that. I know there's kind of some character interest. Cause I know like in Injustice, I think like it's like Damien Robin, but it's not in like Nightwing. He like kills Nightwing or something. There's a lot going on in Injustice. It's a different or, dimension. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's a non-canon thing. thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Which, yeah, I think will have to be like, you know, specifically like, you know, this is its own thing, its own universe, not really connected to anything. Mm-hmm. It's kind of just the characters you know, but kind of thrown together. Do you think they'll keep the kind of like kind of off weird costumes? I think they'll they'll keep the kind of off weird costumes for the other dimension characters so that you can tell them apart mm-hmm. if i'm not mistaken that's kind of that was kind of the case for the right. games themselves uh i think generally speaking they'll they'll keep it because since it is animated you can just draw them to look similar to you know either the comics or the games mm-hmm. uh which again I'll, I'll i'll say it again like i i don't necessarily want I wouldn't necessarily want an Injustice live action movie. I think animated is good. <laughs> yeah, animated much, especially it's a video game, you know, and a comic series. So it's like mm. anime would just make more sense. Yeah. Plus, I think like standalone DC animated movies specifically, you can get away with a lot more. Like, for example, um, the Justice League Doom movie from like 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that was just a standalone one time thing. But like almost every single major villain was already established. Like, you know, the Justice League was well into like mm-hmm. I've been established for many, many years at that point. Like just even it was just even though it was just one movie not connected to anything else, the world felt lived in. You could suspend your disbelief a lot more and just like accept, oh yeah, these are just the characters from the comics. Like boom. Yeah. With you don't it, need to. Yeah. And injustice specifically, I kind of hate. I kind of hate the the opening cut scene of Injustice where they're just like fighting a bunch of random villains who are just here and then Doomsday mm-hmm. shows up and Superman's just like Doomsday and then just punches them. It's like Doomsday is here and you're just like, oh, that guy, that guy again. It's like, I don't know. Like Doomsday feels like a bigger deal. <laughs> just it's a lot. It's like, it, like, a, like, yeah, like granted there's other stuff going on, but it's like Doomsday is kind of priority one. <laughs> like I know there's also like Sinestro and like, Ares is also around like there there are like some huge name staple villains of these characters just like flying around the city and then doomsday is also there it's just i don't know it's just it was a little goofy but because like because it was like because the world did already feel so lived in you can just kind of assume they've done like they've done this hundreds of times like this is probably the at least the fifth time doomsday been reincarnated so you may know how to deal with them like He's just another villain. Like, okay, I, I can handle it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, you know, and I like that. It kind of just, you know, it's one of those things for the fans where it's, you know, animated wise for the fans. Like, you know, these characters. We're just going. We're not explaining who this is. You, you, you should know who this is if you're watching this movie. Like, mm. we don't need to explain to you why. You know, Sinestro. Who's Sinestro? Is he like a yo? Like, you, you know who that is. We're not doing this whole like, yeah. you know what's up. <laughs> yeah, I. I don't want them to do a thing where like the uh, even though I liked the movie fine enough, I didn't I, I think the the new 52 um, animated universe wasn't quite built up enough to the point where Death of Superman fell earned quite yet. Mm-hmm. Even though that movie was pretty solid. I yeah, the universe could have been lived in a little bit longer in order to make it actually. Yeah. And also, yeah, bit. Superman kind of did <clears throat> feel like that he felt like that was the first movie he was that superman you know he kind of felt kind of like almost kind of like you know a loner like i don't need these people in the first movie or two yeah and then in that movie he's like oh everyone loves superman and it's like you know kind of what they did mm-hmm. with like the first justice league where we were kind of like oh yeah superman it was like 
really this guy i mean you kind of liked him anyway <laughs> yeah so yeah, yeah but he got I mean, like it got better but like in that movie it really sold it mm-hmm. but at the same time it was kind of like this kind of felt kind of new yeah because he had been around in just league war club of atlantis mm-hmm. maybe one other somewhere in there but yeah with that being really the first movie that was focused on superman it didn't really feel earned at that point yeah that being said i hope they don't try to try to like put this injustice animated movie in with the newer uh oh, you know man of tomorrow wow. uh js uh yeah jsa universe yeah, that would, but it wouldn't i mean it wouldn't fit at all no like it would just yeah like if anything i feel this this kind of movie would have worked better just do it essentially do it in the new 52 art style like i think that mm-hmm. art style is ideal a for comic book movies and b for an adaptation like this to get like a little this. more brutal, a little more gritty. Like I think that would yeah. be ideal. Because I don't think they did like any kind of like you know Justice Lord alternate universe kind of thing in that universe. No, we haven't universe. had a Justice Lords anime or you know or like Crisis on Two Earths thing since Crisis on Crisis Two Earths from, from like oh nine I think yeah yeah it's been over ten years. Because like even I'm trying to think yeah we haven't had anything like that since like yeah I think. That was the last one because I can't think of like in Young Justice or anything. Raven anything the like Bold that. had one around the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was like, I think, uh, um, Silver Cyclone was that Red Tornado's Alter Ego? Maybe I'm trying to remember. I know it was like Owl Man because that's always the go to. Yeah, I, I think, like, I think it was Arrow. Red Tornado's Alter Ego. I think his name was Silver Cyclone. I think, okay. he was like the yeah, and there was guy. like, it was like blue arrow or something which i'm like oh that's on the nose like yeah. <laughs> you know we could have could have changed it up a little bit nope yeah like uh how how is it so hard for warner brothers just to do comic stuff in their in their live action movies it should have been so easy to do solo movies team up movie solo movies infinite earth solo movie dark side Boom, there's your trilogy of trilogies. Yeah, <laughs> like, <but> so easy. <laughs> they have to do it their way because then everyone's like, oh, you're copying Marvel. It's like, but Marvel did it right. But still, like, <laughs> who cares? If it's good, it's good. <laughs> like, if you do it well, no one will care. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Like, like, also, not to mention, Marvel, has, like, Marvel hasn't done any kind of like, you know, mul- like, alternate dimension doppelganger mm. stuff yet really like they yeah. might get there with uh multiverse of madness but right i mean they had a easily... little bit of end game stuff with that but like that was like two scenes yeah it, it, it even then like whether or not that was a different dimension different timeline whatever like was a was still Doesn't still really make sense. <laughs> yeah to really, really explain more on loki um like they easily could have just done their own thing and it would have been good like they could have beat marvel to the punch with that but they just didn't like okay whatever like but we got the snyder cut Ooh, like, <laughs> whatever Another evil superman will be, will be do <laughs> superman makes up for it mm. so yeah like i'm i'm generally speaking i'm excited for pretty much any animated dc movie that's coming out yeah. um i just think those are you know done yeah. better than most stuff Warner brothers usually puts out when it comes to dc stuff so you know I'm here for it. Speaking of DC animated movies, apparently a League of Super Pets animated movie is coming out next May. All right. So like Crypto, Bat Hound, and whoever Others. else. Yeah. Apparently <laughs> Dwayne Johnson is playing Crypto. Of course he is. <laughs> Why not? So this, like, so this is like Secret Life of Pets meets like DC. Oh man, mm-hmm. this is going to be Dwayne Johnson. Oh, of course there is. When is it coming out? Next May. Okay, well. It was one of those things that, like, the the announce, it was just like, oh, by the way, Dwayne Johnson is playing Crypto in that Super Pets movie. Like, hang on, Super, Super Pets, Pets movie. movie. What yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was like, wait, there's a Super Pets movie? Yeah, I did not see that. Yeah, I, okay. I mean... On um, you know, on list of things that no one asked for, that's right around right in the middle. <laughs> I'm like, all right, right, sure. I mean, it's animated, so I'm not like gonna say no to it. <laughs> I mean, I am like, I don't really. I mean, I mean, I don't know, man. That just doesn't. I mean, 
Super Pets movie just does like I don't like they I know they had like a crypto show on Cartoon Network back in the day, mm-hmm. but like I, which was I'm probably not, was, was honestly probably pretty terrible, but I loved it growing up. <laughs> Fair, but like I don't know, I never really saw it that much because I was mm-hmm. just like I'm not watching this. Like, Remember there was a Green Lantern dog, Green Lantern, maybe a Flash, a Flash Hound, like a Dash yeah. Hound but Flash. Yeah, I think no. I know there was Bat Hound for sure. He had Actually, I, think had Bat, I think Bat Hound was like, he had like I, I don't think college. I don't think he was a like a staple. I think he only like cameoed a couple episodes. Probably. I know he had like a he had like a utility collar and like a bat like skateboard or something, which I'm like, sure. dog, what are you doing? <laughs> whatever. Like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, and it's just kind of, I don't know. It was just like yeah, it was probably a girl one. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was probably like Wonder something. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's a thing. Cool. Right. Whatever. Sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Dwayne Johnson's probably like, I know I have to make five movies a year, but really, like, <laughs> I mean, it does have to be in everything, but at the same time, yeah, whatever. Yeah, outrageous. Um. So, I want to talk real quick about this. Th- we we've talked about the uh, CW Powerpuff Girls live action reboot thing. Uh-huh. Uh, it was announced the other day that the I'm just gonna essentially word for word from the, the title that I like the title of the article that I I uh, oh, no. copied, the Powerpuff Girls CW reboot to reboot the pilot later this year. They already filmed and like did everything for the pilot that was gonna air, but it was apparently so bad that they're redoing it later this year. Ah. Uh. Mm. I mean, yeah, it's gonna uh, train classic. I mean, we know this is gonna be a train wreck. Mm-hmm. Like, there is no way this is gonna not be a train wreck. I mean, this. Uh-huh. Is, I mean, this screen like you just like live action and Powerpuff Girls just automatically doesn't already no. doesn't go together at all. If you have seen that show, you know you can't do that. They don't like have that. toes. How do you? They don't <laughs> have fingers. They they're literally like little circles with like limbs on them they're this big <laughs> and then they fly around with superman godlike abilities uh-huh. have like laser vision super strength like <laughs> invulnerability basically and the amount of damage and the that show is pretty much always extremely violent oh, do not be fooled oh, there is yeah. like i mean there's, a, there's blood in that show that show mm-hmm. has like the teeth flying out these like Mojo's brain showing through his helmet half the time. Mm-hmm. Like that show is extremely violent. There's no way they can do that. Like, yep. <laughs> uh, why? Why? Who said that? Like, why Powerpuff Girls live action? Like, that's just not, that doesn't even make any sense. Who signed up on? Even... I'm sorry. I want to be in that room. Like, the person who's like, what if we did Powerpuff Girls live action? I'd be like, no, no, veto. <laughs> completely false. Try again. No chance. <laughs> Try again. You fail. I like, would. I would. I would accept Dexter's Labs live action before I would accept Power. Exactly. I don't can, want Dexter's Lab either. No. Either like them. again, would it work? But I believe that before I believe Powerpuff. Like on the list of Cartoon Network shows that would not work in live action, Powerpuff Girls is like near the top of that list. Mm-hmm. That makes no like, sense. You could do but Samurai Jack. Like that seems pretty easy to translate. Yes. Or. Or even Johnny Bravo, like sure. Yeah, like would... Yes, just have a big like John Cena or somebody be Johnny mm-hmm. Bravo or something. Like I know they don't have the budget for that, but still, just some <laughs> big dude mm-hmm. be Johnny Bravo. And like, I don't know. Or like again, I said this the first time, but like totally spies. Mm-hmm. Same kind of concept. You got three girls, it's like based on a cartoon. You know, they only you, know, you don't have to make it weird that they're grown mm-hmm. up, they're already teenagers, just make them. I mean, you know, yeah. make them maybe college age to be more, you know, a, you know, more relatable. I don't know what mm-hmm. they're going for, but it's like that's way easier. And I know that show has a lot going on too, but like that's way easier to do live action than. Yep. I don't know. I no, that, like. I I, I, I would be Hall of Fame bad right here. I would kill to just read the script for this. <laughs> pilot that they deemed so bad the the studio like the the channel that still airs riverdale which sucks <laughs> <laughs> riverdale every single line of dialogue is worse than the last it's insane like, 
<laughs> like the channel that runs that deem like no powerpuff girls reboot too bad they had to reboot i kind of want to see reboot. it like i i can't like i really i i hate to say it and i know i don't i don't like things that are so bad and good but i want i just want to see this train wreck i know you do you you're you're lo- you're loving this i i just want to like this train wreck it's gonna be like this is gonna be that de- i mean this is the, like i mean this is like that woman like you know like riverdale all these like mm-hmm. you know pretty much don't need to be on tv shows yep and this one sounds way worse like yeah. way way I'm just like, yeah i don't are you sure you want to do this like I'm, I'm, I'm talking to these actors i'm like i'm talking to these actors i'm like are you sure because this is gonna follow you like this is like you're, you're gonna have to bounce back hard after this uh-huh. <laughs> like, or you might be done like this is gonna get rough like if i were dove cameron i wouldn't see working with the cw as much of a step up over disney channel <laughs> like <laughs> step down definitely Step down, especially considering Disney owns everything. Yeah. Like, granted, I've heard working for them is like not great. <clears throat> yeah, especially, especially the like, child stars working yeah. for Disney Channel is not fun. But at fun, the same but... time, like, yeah, uh, I mean, this doesn't sound like a leg up, man. No. I mean, it, it sounds like, you know, a fast way to get out of the business. And, you know, mm. I don't know. I don't, you know, obviously, regardless, they're making more money than me. So I mm-hmm. can't say anything. But, okay, whatever. Man. This sounds, I mean, this might be, I mean, I, I kind of want to see, like, is this going to be, like, worst shows ever made? Like, because it, it's on that trajectory right now. Mm-hmm. Like, it already is. So I'm kind of excited. I want to see if this is just as bad as we think it is. It would be hilarious if they do reboot the pilot they already made, and it's still gutter trash. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like, because, like, my thing is, like, Pilot episodes generally are not great. Just yeah, because that, it's that's the first fine. episode. You're just trying to get your show, you know, as yeah. the name implies, off the ground. Mm. So it's like, you know, just to establish the world. So it's like, if your pilot is so bad that they're just like, no, mm. try again. It's like not even like we'll think about it. Like no, off the bat. No, if, not if you even air like this, you won't we will, consider we will it later. You immediately like oh okay no, okay we, like <laughs> you will not get off like you can't get off like, you have been grounded literally mm-hmm. like ooh, okay <laughs> this is gonna be rough. But I okay, still want to so, know. I think that's coming. Uh, supposedly gonna be coming out early next year. So. I think they're just gonna. I don't know. At this rate, they might just can the whole show. Maybe, maybe. Which I think would be the smart move. Save face, can it? And then please release. Even like, even if the CGI is not done, just then release the the, the pilot <laughs> you already made. Just do it. <laughs> I'm so worried. Poor actors. Don't do it. Get out while you can. Don't do it. So. Moving right on to continuing our road to E3 2021. Woo! So, very similar to last week, I want to play a little game with you called Will It Be Revealed? Similar to the game last week of Will It Be Shown, which is we talked about games that already had trailers previously but were MIA. This is games that have either been rumored or just should be there but might not be. We'll see. I'm going to go down a huge list of games that I have uh, written, written down that feel like are that are pretty likely to show up, but knowing these companies also, you know, they might. Uh, we've been saying this stuff for a while, so will this be the year this stuff actually is revealed? So, at the top, I had, will a Sonic game be shown before this year's E3? But it was actually announced, like, couple of minutes before this this uh we started recording this that a sonic like 30th anniversary live stream thing will be will will be on may 27th well they're at least show probably one sonic game (laughs) i hope so (laughs) yeah (laughs) so yes a sonic game will be revealed by the end of e3 (laughs) no no it's like or else (laughs) (laughs) you get through the sonic 30th anniversary live stream and we only get like a trailer for Sonic the movie like the, you know the second Sonic movie and like a new show or something and no games I'm like what <laughs> how 
dare you? <laughs> so yeah, that probably will be the case. I would, I would hope so. Yeah. Moving on to Ubisoft. Will this be the year that a new Splinter Cell game will be announced? It's been since 2013. That's what I'm saying. It's been a hot minute. <laughs> He's ah. Sam Fisher has been teased in several other games by Ubisoft. Like either it'll be mobile games or like Tom Clancy ensemble stuff, but like he's never been able to helm his own game since 2013. Will this be the year? I, I don't, I don't, I don't really, see, you know, there's no like, as far as I can tell, is there really anything like pointing toward this being the year? It's like, I don't, I don't, I don't he, see it. I don't know. Outside of the fact that uh, Sam Fisher, the main character from Rain- from mm-hmm. sorry from Splinter Cell, has been teased in almost every other major Ubisoft game, like I think he like you can uh, play him in uh, Rainbow Six Siege, or at least like a skin of him. Mm-hmm. One of the um, Ghost Recon games was a mission that involved mm-hmm. him. I think uh, there are a couple of mobile games that have him playable, but like. They're clearly at least wanting to keep the character around. It would be weird if they don't eventually make a new one. Right. <laughs> but I don't like, know. Why mention him a bunch if you're not even going to like utilize his own source material? Yeah. Like, those are the kinds of decisions that I feel should be made if the character like already has games already as well established. Like, if, like, you know, you know Mario spinoffs and Mario like Mario stuff being in other games isn't crazy because we know we're gonna get you know a Mario game every year anyway. So like, it's not it's not like um, every essentially every single time Sam Fisher shows up in a Ubisoft press conference is like, this is disrespectful. Like <laughs> like this is <laughs> like we you know we this proves that you know that we all want to play mm-hmm. as this character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're allowing us to play this character in a way that he's not intended to be play as. Yeah, you know that he's a big name, but you're using him just for clout. That we're. Ah. <laughs> but then again, I mean, is it working? <laughs> I don't. I don't know how all those games are selling. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I was like, I mean, if it's working, I get it. But, yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, you make a good point. It's like, why keep popping him up in other things if it's not going to be a point? But at mm-hmm. the same time. They've been popping up in other things since 2018. <laughs> Man, because, you know, I don't think, I mean, is something coming eventually? Probably. Is something yeah. going to show up this year? Uh, I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't bet on it. 50 <laughs> 50? Yeah, I gave 50 50. I don't know, maybe 40 60 towards no, like, yeah. towards, yeah, like mm. 40 being towards, or 40 being towards yes. yes. Okay. 60 being torn down, at least for me. But at the same time, you know, optimistic 40. Okay. Got it. <laughs> 40 with a little smiley face next to it. 40, him. like. <laughs> it could happen, you know, 40%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. I'll try it. Yeah. Um, will this be the year that a new Rayman game is announced? Ooh, I actually bought a Rayman game the other day. Like Which Rayman, one? Rayman Rush on the PlayStation 1. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Oh. Yeah, like real. Yeah, it was like a real throw. We and my brother played that game like way mm-hmm. back in the day. Like, Did you like buy? Was it like on the PlayStation Store and you just? Oh no, it's it like or? we. There's a there's a. Do you have? It's like a retro game store by my house. Mm. So I was okay. just like, oh, dude, there. Like we still have our PS2 in my house somewhere. Mm. So it's like, yeah, I'll play. You know, I I bought it, but of course we haven't played it yet because you know it's yeah. just like eh, effort. But mm. like, no, now we <laughs> when we feel like it, we'll play it. Sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, Rayman. The last one was in 2013. That was Rayman Legends. Yeah. It's been ported to every single system since. <laughs> it was ported to you know, PS4 and Xbox One. It was ported to the new uh, uh, the Switch. I think it's on uh, Series X and PS5, or at least it was really? announced to be on those. Well, that might happen. It might be a anna- well, if it maybe if it hasn't been announced, it'll probably be announced that it's on that newest gen. But I mean. Do you think a new Rayman? Because I don't know, man. Like, it'd be cool. I've, 
Now that I think about it, Rayman would be like a really like good PS5 game. Like based yeah. on just like I, I think it could be. I think I think so. I think so. I mean like Rayman Rayman Legends is one of the best platformers ever. Right. So it would be weird for them to like have this game that is fantastic and they know it is great because they keep porting it to everything. Right. Yet like they know it's they know it is so good. They know that fans like it and then not want to build on mm-hmm. the next like, like building that franchise even more. Like it could be like a Grand Theft Auto 5 situation, which is kind of like Rayman isn't for- nearly as popular or profitable as, as GTA 5. Yeah, well, yeah, I know, but kind of like, you know, it's like just keep stringing the same game along, kind yeah, of. Like Skyrim. Of making yeah. a new one. Mm. Kind yeah. Of like, It'll be like, guess what? Oh, Rayman is being ported again. Fuck. Oh, like I would even yay. Hmm. Okay, let me let me ask you this. Do you kind of on that same train of thought? Do you think it will be more likely of a brand new Rayman game or a remake of a previous Rayman game? Definitely a remake. Personally, I think because yeah. I think that would be kind of the safer move, mm-hmm. definitely, because it's like, you know, all right, let's not, you know, let's not mess this up. Because again, it's like when you try something new, it's like the potential to mess up is much greater because yeah. the potential to overtake what was made when it's really good is very low, but the potential to mess it up is much higher. So True. it's like, if it ain't broke, let's just bring it, you know, let's just take what we got, you know, bring it up to current gen and just throw it on there people mm. the, the fans will go for it yeah and they will It'll be like an homage but at the same time a new thing yeah i think there is a 75 percent chance of no how i'll say this there is a 85 percent chance of rayman appearing in the ubisoft forward presentation okay. thing whether it be during a montage of just i ubisoft i think usually starts their press conferences with like montages of different games that either in development or on that are just they just like i want to just like sizzle reel is just stuff that they have. Mm-hmm. There's a pretty good chance of Rain Man just kind of like being in one of those for like half a second. But I, I say there's a forty percent chance of a new Rain Man game actually being announced. Yeah, I, like is that just any game or like as a remake or just like a new Rain Man game? Like, okay, so as a, I'll say 40, 60, 60, 40. 4060 okay, on a new okay. one, 6040 on a remake. I, yeah, I, yeah, I'd probably. I would say like personally, mm-hmm. I'm like 75 remake, 25 new one because oh. I don't, I don't see them making a new one. I don't. Mm. Like I know they yeah. made like a new crash and everything recently, but it's like I, I don't know. I feel like yeah. I feel like I don't. I don't know. I don't think like they're gonna go. I mean, I know it's not the same company, but like, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't think it's gonna be. I think a new Rayman's been warranted. Uh, yeah, I get it. I honestly, I think there is a higher chance of them announcing Mario plus Rabbids two. It's mm-hmm. been, I think, four years. I think that came out in twenty seventeen. Yeah, I forgot um, about that. Like, it just like that's the kind of game that no one asked for, no one even <laughs> considered asking for. Yet it's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everyone I talked to that play the game likes the game, but it yeah. was just kind of like, all right, well, give it a shot. Like an R- RTS shooter that has Rayman, sorry, like Rabbids and Mario characters in it. Like, uh, okay, I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for it. Um, yeah, I think there's a higher chance of that happening. Um, will there be a new Kingdom Hearts game announced this year? Honestly, I don't want there to be. I really don't. <laughs> so Not even t- like a spinoff or like prequel. <laughs> I mean, well, anything? Well, well, I know. I mean, we had the whole melody of memory and like, which is it's a rhythm, it's a rhythm game. Yeah. You know, you just didn't buy like, it, did you? Oh no, I didn't. Okay, not, <laughs> I did not. I did not. I no, <laughs> no, mm-hmm. no. After after what happened last time, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait it out. <laughs> but okay. um. I don't think there'd be another Kingdom Hearts game just because, like, 
I don't know. I think they might give it some time because they do like to like let it, you know, let it, you know, oh, this is coming. Oh, this is coming. Like tease it forever. But at the same time, I feel like I don't think they will. I don't think they will because I don't really know. Because again, I haven't, I haven't watched all the cutscenes from Melody Memory yet because I know like there's probably something that I haven't seen. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it's like I really wouldn't want them to, you know, there is a lot of lore that doesn't understand. But at this point, I feel like they're just retconning kind of stuff just to add more, yeah. just whatever they want. <clears throat> but I don't know. I hope if there is, I will, I will do my family duty and, you know, at least look into it, be excited for it. But if not, I'm yeah. not gonna, you know, cry. <laughs> I think there's a pretty good chance of them announcing King, at least Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 coming to Switch. Okay. But I don't, yeah, I, I don't see them uh, announcing anything new. A new game series. or anything, yeah. yeah. But that'd be, yeah, I think that would be <clears> nice. And you, I would definitely recommend playing them if you ever did. But, yeah. but. Um, what do we have next? Will there be a new Mega Man game? Oh, I, I, yeah, there should be. I think there I should think be. So. <laughs> there should be. There definitely should be. I think there's a chance. There's a chance, but there definitely should be because Mega Man is one of those series that like does not always get the like props it deserves sometimes, especially yeah. like it. Mega Man I, Eleven I came out in 2018. Mm-hmm. It was very fun. I hard quit fighting the, the yellow <laughs> devil. Well, you know what? <laughs> yeah, it does that. It does that. <laughs> you, you, like, this game is so much fun. Then you get to that one boss that makes you just want to stop video games for a month. Like, you just don't even care. I've had my fun. I don't need. I don't need to see the. Right. You know what? I, you know, I'm gonna go outside. Like, I just need to. <laughs> I just need something fresh else. To go. Yeah, I need. Like, I haven't said that in so long. I just need fresh air. It's like, wow, you really lost, didn't mm-hmm. you? Like, <laughs> Like you don't even want to play something else. You just want to stop playing for a uh, while. But yeah, like Mega Man X Nine would be fantastic. Yep. Or you know a new. We're actually like saying that Mega Man. They're actually finishing Mega Man Legends Three, or a new Battle Network. Just any version of Mega Man. Yeah. There's so much, so much that that yeah, franchise I, can give you. Just anything I, Mega Man would. There's be. so much. Yeah. You know, like first of all, if they had a new Battle Network. I might scream. That'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like i like yeah it's just like Mega Man belongs to, like especially i think like because i know legends for a long time is one of those were like man that'd be if they brought those in three it's like oh that'd be really great but at the same time i think if they just kind of st- i think just regular mega man would probably mm-hmm. be the most i think anticipated to be yeah. honest just because, yeah. you know, it's the most known, it's the best, you know, and that's the mm-hmm. one, you know, even the Smash character is based on, you know, the regular Mega Man. True. Like, you yeah, know. Either, either Mega Man, oh, t- sorry, Mega Man 12 or X9, either one of those would be yeah. pretty neat. I give it, honestly, not that high of a chance, mm-hmm. but it should. <laughs> it should, 45, but, 45%. Yeah. Yeah. Eh, yeah, that's honest, but it makes me sad because it's true. Yeah, like Capcom, like usually announces a couple of like really big major games at E3 every year, like you know Monster Hunter World, you know the newest Resident Evil game and stuff like that. So they're gonna have some major announcement probably at the Microsoft press conference. Um, yeah, the hell's the worry? They announced uh, Devil May Cry Five at the Microsoft mm-hmm. thing. So like somewhere in Microsoft's E3, there's gonna be some major announcement. I'll probably have, have uh, two others. Like we'll speculate in a second. Um, but I think if Mega Man were to show up, it would be in Nintendo's uh, direct. Yeah. Or maybe Capcom will have their own little mini, like, 20 Maybe. Presentation. Now, if that, if that happens, I'm like, definitely something, hopefully. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, like, I'm expecting two, maybe three, like, big games from Capcom. But if they, if they announce they're having their own, which I, the, like, the schedule for E3 isn't finalized yet. We just know mm-hmm. the company that'll be there. They announced they're going to have their own thing. Then I'm expecting Mega Man. <laughs> Better be. I will be disappointed if there is no Mega Man. <laughs> yes. Um, what do you think the chances are of Street Fighter Six? <clears throat> Honestly, pretty, pretty, 
pretty solid actually yeah mm-hmm. thinking about it because i know like it's street fighter's kind of making a comeback kind of i know it's yeah, I know people with the OG fighting community aren't loving the newer ones because it's, oh, this character's four nine nine. It's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> like, what happened to the good old days where I just had to beat the game with everyone? <laughs> like, why? Like, good. So, yes, it is probably time for a new Street Fighter game. It's been five years since uh, Street Fighter Five, and that was in 2016. Um, however, Street Fighter V was at least partially funded by Sony. It was a PS4 ex- exclusive and still is. Like, it's not even, I don't think mm-hmm. it's even on PC at this point. Actually, no, it is on PC, but not on Xbox. Yeah. So like, it is like console exclusive to Sony. If, it's, if Street Fighter VI is the same scenario, it has a zero percent chance of showing up this year since Sony's not going to be there. <laughs> like they don't, they would want to show that at their press conference. Um, but if Street Fighter Six is coming to everything, I, I would say probably seventy percent chance, if not more. Seventy percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, that being said, what do you think are the chances of a Marvel versus Capcom game? Well, with Marvel movie, yeah, the probably pretty good. NBC NBC I was not good. Mm-mm. Infinite was not good. <laughs> that came out in twenty seventeen. Really? Yeah, like that one came out after Street Fighter Five. So, do you think? I'm thinking one or the other, but not both. No, definitely not both. Yeah, so honestly, I'm kind of thinking like. Versus like with Marvel Heroes, just because I mean Marvel is you know still one of the biggest things going on right now. Granted, you know the characters for the original games were not the ones being used now because now they're trying to like hard press the MCU into it, yeah. which you know isn't. You know, I know my brother hates that personally, but now that Disney owns pretty much all the property, exactly, can, yeah. and that's kind of why I think they'll try to like rebrand and kind of go back to how it was because like now they you know they can use x-men or they can use Mm -hmm. you know more four and whoever yeah Yeah, it's like they can use more characters that were in the original so it's because i know like you know my brother's like i want to use rogue i want to use this it's like deadpool dr doom it's yeah it's like oh you got you know Groot, like you know what it's going (laughs) Groot and rocket it's cool yeah and (laughs) rocket which is kind of like i mean (laughs) okay but you know uh, yeah, okay. I I had a thought, but I lost. Oh well. Um, I I if if Marvel if a new Marvel versus Capcom game were announced, if I were Capcom, I would just call it Marvel v Capcom Four and just pretend Infinite didn't happen. It never happened. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, you guys didn't see that, right? Yeah, I didn't. This this though. is the fourth Marvel v Capcom. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, the main thing, I remember my thought now, the main thing that I think would potentially uh, uh, stop me from thinking that NBC would happen this year is apparently it's heavily rumored that NetherRealm is making some kind of Marvel fighting game. So either Mortal Kombat v Marvel or DC v Marvel or something with, or some kind of Marvel fighting game with, you know, ah. with Mortal, Mortal Kombat, uh, controls like mm-hmm. that could be fun i mean yeah they could ca- kind of like marvel and then like bring in like the injustice kind of like style mm-hmm. kind of that could be pretty awesome yeah okay like, we'll see if that happens like i think yeah. um uh if 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 that game the essentially if by the end of dc fandom uh we don't get an announcement of injustice 3 um I think that makes the, the rumor of them making a Marvel game more likely, but I think we could potentially see that game. We're going to see some, I think there is a, a 75 to 80% chance of seeing some Marvel fighting game by the end of this E3. Okay. You think yeah. so? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, because it has 
Yeah, I can see it. Just like, yeah, because like they have more characters now. They have the freedom to do things how they want more so. Yeah. So it would definitely be weird, technically having a Warner Brothers studio working on a Disney property. Yeah. But whatever. <laughs> Maybe not so weird if they start, you know. <laughs> they, you yeah, know. If they could. If, you if never Disney know. Starts owning DC, <laughs> whatever. You know, you know, acquires somehow. Yeah. You know the fine print technically they don't own it they just own the people who own it so really do they you know i don't know yeah. how monopoly law works but <laughs> like like make a deal like kind of with sony make a deal mm-hmm. to use the license right they'll actually own the characters of, <laughs> some kind of like loophole to like we can make this happen just like pay this other company to buy it for them <laughs> then, <laughs> then they can use it. <laughs> just give them the funds to buy it so uh-huh. they have it but we have a collaboration with this company but they technically own it but we still exactly. threw them oh my gosh that that might be legal right <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know it's one of those things you see in tv but you're like i feel like that wouldn't happen in real life yeah. um you kind of mentioned this earlier but is there is there even a a the smallest chance of gta 6 no, 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 because it's still, I mean, if it ain't broke, like... GTA 5 is coming out on PS5 later this year. It's no, yep. no, 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 give it three more years. <laughs> no, I mean, if it ain't broke, maybe, you know, on the, it's... maybe on the 10th anniversary of GTA 5 in 23rd, sorry, 2023, maybe then we'll get GTA really? 5. Two. I feel like we're gonna show <laughs> GTA 5 for the next like. 15 years. We'll get GTA 5 2. It'll Final Fantasy it. <laughs> <laughs> GTA 5, the next chapter. GTA 5, yeah. Ultimate Edition. Like, GTA I, I 5 is a surprise. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, GTA 6. 0. 0. 0.000. No way. Zero. What? What? Watch it drop, though. Watch it drop. <laughs> <Okay. Somehow. laughs> Watch it somehow. We're like, yeah, there's no way. There's no way. I'm like, what? It's like just announced as we finish this podcast. GTA Six is happening. What? Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. Now into the Nintendo portion. Woo. What are the chances of a Star Fox game? I'm excited because I do want there to be a Star Fox, but I'm also like, hmm. I. Th- No, I think they should. I think that's pretty. I mean, what do you think? You're more in the Nintendo. So you got your ear to the ground. Here, Nintendo here's wise. kind of my mindset with what I'm going to say here. Nintendo, as of right now, <clears throat> we have nothing for the second half of this year. After Skyward Sword in July, there are no games announced for later this year. Nothing. Uh, yeah, we have no confirmed releases for the second half of this year. There are several games that could fill that block. Um, well, let's have a uh, number no Heroes 3, but that's not like made by Nintendo, that's just coming to the Switch. Um, mm-hmm. There are no like in house or at least like co made by Nintendo games coming later this year. Potentially, we could get Breath of the Wild 2 filling that slot. We could get Bayonetta 3. We could get Metroid Prime 4. We could get just a bunch of other different games. Oh, I guess uh, uh, Pokemon uh, Diamond Pro remakes, but even then, most of the times, uh, the, the Pokemon game isn't the only game to come out in the mm-hmm. holiday season. So there's got to be some other, at least mid, mid to high tier game come out this year. Star Fox easily could be that. Like a return to form, but like actually moves the story along for once. Because every single Star Fox game that's come out has just been, oh, here's Star Fox 64 again. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Star Fox 64 is basically just a retelling of the of the snes one so like really every single game aside from kind of assault on the gamecube but even then that was just you fought andros again as the final boss like (laughs) every single game has had the same final boss (laughs) you gotta mix it up at least a little bit yeah i think some like grand return of star fox could fill that like you know september october slot if -hmm. not like be the big holiday title for nintendo yeah. Maybe, yeah, that would be pretty awesome too. Yeah. Just like, you know, Star Fox kind of come back to the main. Because, like, you know, we've got Mario, obviously, you know, Zelda's doing big stuff. You know, 
bring Star Fox back in there. Like, get back, you know, we're one of the heavy hitters. Like, mm -hmm. like, it should be a pretty heavy hitter. Like, especially if they if they get rid of the, like, on-rails shooting aspect and make it, like, completely, like, open, mm -hmm. open dogfights. Yes. Like, that would I, be awesome. I like the, the on-rail portions, but I think it just doesn't work as well in, like, the modern era. Yeah, I think oh, now you're so used to things being so like move aroundable. Because like, I mean, not to brag, but even Kingdom Hearts three, they like the like ship portion became way more open world yeah. this time. Exactly. So if they like actually, you know, did something different with the story, actually felt like it had major effort put into it. Because Star Fox Zero on the Wii U back in 2016, that was that was a thing. That was just not. A, <laughs> it was called Star Fox Zero. Yet it was a retelling of 64. When like, why wasn't it a prequel? Like there, there is like actually some lore with with Fox's dad that hasn't ever actually been told in the games before. So like, it should have just been a prequel or something. Whatever. Um, mm. uh, anyway, I give. I'm not gonna get some expectations too high, but like 65 to 70 percent chance of that happening. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm less inclined to say that for the next one, but they could surprise me with an F Zero game. Uh, Maybe. Uh, uh, you think so? No, I don't. Okay, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I mean, like, I don't, like, like optimism, but also, uh, like, ideally, I would want a like a Captain Falcon game, where it's like half the game is you're racing, the other half is like. You're in the street beating up bad guys, like mm. you know, doing Captain Falcon from Smash yeah. stuff. Be, be doing Captain Falcon things, yes. yeah. Because, <laughs> like, yes, there is a cap, there's a like F Zero anime where he is doing stuff like that. There's some cutscenes from the GameCube one, which we haven't actually had an F Zero game since the GameCube. Um, not even like a remake or anything. Like, just remake the GameCube one. That's a, that, that's the the best one. So just do that if anything. Um, Although there actually was a rumor a couple of years back of a of like a Star Fox F Zero hybrid called Star Fox Grand Prix that was heavily rumored and like basically confirmed true by several different outlets, but then never came out. So that that could end up actually being a thing and, and happen this year. I don't know, um, but yeah, I don't know. 12% chance of that zero. <laughs> well. Yeah, I, I'm not, not, I'm not putting my money on that by yeah. any means. <laughs> um, Pikmin 4. So this is a game that's been, again, rumored, basically confirmed by Miyamoto himself since 2015. They recently ported Pikmin 3 to the Switch last mm. October. You right. think Pikmin 4 will be announced? Yeah, I that probably have, yeah, especially with the recent porting, I think mm. that's a good sign for it. So yeah, I'd say like 60, 70. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. 60, 65 ish. Um, again, not getting my hopes too high, but like especially for how well Pikmin four Pikmin three did, mm -hmm. like it was it it outsold. I think it, it Pikmin three outsold Pikmin one and two combined. Ooh. Like within a couple of weeks, like it was, it did very well. Good sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, like of of the three we talked about so far, honestly, I think Pikmin Four has the highest chance. So like, yeah, I'll say seventy. Mm -hmm. Is Nintendo crazy enough to do Mario Kart Nine? No, because Mario Kart Eight still selling like hotcakes. Mario cakes. Kart Eight. Sold 10 million units last year. It's just the same game again. <laughs> like, what? Mario Kart 8, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Switch sold more, sold more sales than most games do in their lifetime. Yes. <laughs> like, it sold most, more copies in the last year. In its fourth year in the market, real like arguably ninth year if you count like right. from like, yeah, like, Just, yeah, only including ninth, Switch. So like, seventh, like, yeah, seventh if you include the, you know, from the Wii U, 
Like it's been technically, you know, people have been able to buy Mario Kart for over it's Mario Kart 8 for seven ish years now, and it's sold more <laughs> copies in the last year alone than most games do. <laughs> Mario Kart is Mario Kart has reached that point where it is the system staple. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. If you have a Switch, you're getting Mario Kart. It's just yeah. implied. You don't even leave the store with the Switch without Mario Kart. It's exactly it's basically implied. So it's like because yeah, everyone plays Mario Kart. Like, if you play video games, you play Mario Kart. Like, no, I've never met. Have you ever met anyone who like doesn't know how to play Mario Kart? Nope. Right? Like, if you play, like if you don't play video games, fine. But if you play video games, you play Mario Kart. Like, it's you know, some people are obviously better than us, but it's like you've at least played. Like, and that's what I mean. It's like the Switch staple. So honestly, they don't really have to make a new Mario Kart. They can just like you know, Mario double. You know, this until next gen. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, even though they don't really have to make one for this gen, honestly, I mean, they can kind of just keep going and then, you know, maybe do the same thing again. Maybe near the end of, you know, the Switch, they got like, Mario Kart 9 and then Mario Kart 9 Deluxe for the Ex- next gen. Like, exactly. That, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Like, I think Mario Kart 9 will come out on the Switch at some point. But I like, think that'll be, I think that'll be next year. Like when they're already pushing okay. 100 million units. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> like it's still so profitable. Why would you mess yeah, with that? Exactly. Like Mario Kart 8 is not slowing down anytime soon. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just gonna do some math real quick. Like I just um 1.17 1. 1. Okay. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sold more copies last year let me just double check these numbers real quick mario kart 8 deluxe on the on the switch last year sold more in one year in its fourth year in the uh, third, I think, yeah, fourth year on the market on the Switch, sold more in that one year than the original Metroid on the NES, Metroid Prime, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, Prime 3 Corruption, and Other M combined. <laughs> sold more in one year than five Metroid games yeah. combined. <laughs> Just like, because everyone played, like, basically i'd say you know i would say you could for every switch out there like i would you know multiply that number by like 0.085 and that's how many mario karts are getting sold like that every pretty much everyone who's got a switch is getting mario kart yeah it has i think like a third ish attachment rate i think there's 85 uh, million switches out mario kart has sold um 35 million so yeah, it's, it's not. I'm surprised it's not more. To be honest, like yeah, that, I think that's over a third attach rate. Yeah, Mario Kart like, Eight Deluxe on the Switch alone, not including the Wii U numbers, has sold double the entire Metroid franchise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and again, and it's not like people don't play Metroid. Like you know, Metroid's not. I mean, not as much, obviously, but it's like. Yeah, like that. That is a kind like. Metroid games don't sell as much as they should. They are a fantastic game, so they should sell more. But like, that's just just putting into perspective. That is just a single franchise oh, that Nintendo has, yeah. <laughs> and that's not even like. I mean, that's one version of a Mario game. That's yeah. just Mario Kart. That's not even including like Mario Party, just Mario Brothers, like Mario mm-hmm. Odyssey. Now, I mean, all these other things. Just like, yep. Uh, so. So like right now, I yeah, I think Nintendo would be kind of dumb to to announce Mario Kart 9 right now. Um, yeah, I, I I do think we will we will see by the end of the Switch's life, but I don't think it'll be announced yet. Yeah, like yeah, like I said, like kind of like they did with the Wii U, kind of when they know they're like, okay, we're gonna drop new gen pretty soon. We'll just mm-hmm. start it on there. And then, you know, it'll have enough time for its first year or two because everyone's going to get it anyway. Mm-hmm. And then when you go next gen, 
Okay, yeah. Everyone just gets a Mario Kart. Use the game with more stuff. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, same exact game with like one extra item. Yeah, I'm in. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, Where do I sign? Like, uh, last, last one I have on here. Do you think the fabled Nintendo Switch Pro will be announced at this year's E3? Ooh. That I could see, maybe. Mm-hmm. That I could see because it's been long. It's been no, It's been long enough. Yeah, um, I think I've talked about this before on the podcast, but uh, Nvidia is actually discontinuing the chipset that is in the Switch, the Tiger X One. They're actually mm-hmm. discontinuing either the Tiger X One or like some other component in the Switch mm-hmm. that Nvidia is giving them. Like they're discontinuing that by the end of this year. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Nintendo has enough stockpile to make more, you know, normal switches for a well, while after still. that. But before too long, they'll need to upgrade in some way. I don't. I personally don't think the Switch Pro will be announced at E3. The reason why is I think by the end of this year it will be announced. Like honestly, I think you could easily see like a couple of weeks after E3 mm-hmm. it could be announced. A very, something very similar happened with the Switch Lite. E3 came around, and nothing was announced there, even though it was heavily rumored to be there. And then mid July, Switch Lite was announced. It just hit so there coming out in September. Too. Same thing happened with the the new 3DS, uh, the, the the new 2DS XL. Like, I think outside of maybe the DS Lite, the DS Lite might have actually been at a E3, but like more often than not, uh, system revisions. As far as Nintendo is concerned, system revisions aren't actually at E3. They focus mm-hmm. completely on game stuff and then have the announcement of the revision like very, very soon after. So, yeah. Which again yeah, makes sense because, like, you know, if, you know, the biggest thing at E3 is something else, you can kind of use that as like a recentering of the attention mm-hmm. back on Nintendo. Exactly. So, yeah, I, Switch Pro will happen at some point this or this will be announced sometime this year probably to be like uh, to be re- released at the same time whenever Breath of the Wild 2 comes out whether that be this November next March some point within probably there. like early next year I think yeah uh, Switch Pro will be announced and revealed it's and like released can't pre- then. yeah it's like it's gonna be Breath of the Wild so it's like you want the best game in the best quality the best there so it's like yeah yeah yeah, that's an, uh, that's also why I don't think they'll announce uh, Switch Pro at this E3. They have potentially several other major hitters they don't want to exactly. take away focus from. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, is, are there any other games that you just generally really want to be revealed? I mean, I, I right now I can't really think of it. I mean, I hope you know we we'll just hear more from like you know Gotham Knights and stuff like that, but like. As far as like, you know, or maybe like a Spider-Man 2, mm-hmm. but I mean, other than that, which you know, what you're hearing is like only going to be PS5 exclusive, which I'm like, how dare you? But I guess I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, we'll see. But other than that, I mean, you know, I think I think it's going to be a great E3. I think mm-hmm. so. But I mean, you know, especially now we're back. But at the same time, it's like. We'll just see what happens. I'm kind of just open. I'm right. I'm ready to be surprised. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so, is there anything else you want to bring up or discuss from today? I saw. Uh, actually, no. I'm okay. I'm okay. What? No. I. I don't know. I don't know if this is. I don't know. I saw this trailer. It's like some kind of like Power Rangers fighting game that like I saw. I don't know if it's like recent or not. It was like this ad on YouTube, and I was like, oh, what is this? There was a. What is it called Power Rangers Shattered Dimensions? Something like that. It like it kind of looked like it was like. Street Fighter, but Power Rangers was weird, and I was kind of like, because um, there was like a Chun Li Power Ranger, and like, and I was like, yeah. uh, hang on, hang on, one second, one second. Shattered Grid, like Power Ranger. I think it's Battle, Battle for the Grid. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's been around for since 2019. But... Okay, so it's not new. They just added new things. Yeah, still fun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, but like, yeah, but I don't know. I've Power never Rangers played... is one of those franchises that, like, 
growing up, I kind of hated because like I I was too cool for it, I guess. But like mm-hmm. it's a it's a fun franchise. <laughs> it's a very yeah, I, dumb fun franchise. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's one of those things. Like I missed out because again, you know, my parents, you know, didn't allow me to watch it for whatever right, reason. Right. You know, they swear they didn't, but I promise they did. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> but like you know, and, but it's like. It, yeah, like it looks like something that like me knowing how I used to be, I would have loved that stuff. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, I'm like, is it too late for me to get in it? Maybe, but like, I watch it something. You know, I don't know if I could watch the kitchen, but like if they tried to like, I feel like if they made like an older version, like not so much like I know they had the what 2017 movie or whatever. That, that movie was, isn't very good. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, I heard that, which I'm like, yeah, but that, you know, the live yeah. action movies are rarely up to the par that the original yeah. source material it, are. So. It's the kind of movie where it's like, if this movie got a sequel where they were actually were the Power Rangers for most of that movie, it could have been good. Mm. But because this was like, you know, a, a setup origin movie type thing where they only were the Power Rangers for like 10 minutes. Um, yeah, see. It never really got a chance to be good. And I don't understand, like with things that like, again, I don't, again, I'm not going to sit here and feel like people don't power, but I feel like Power Rangers is one of those franchises that you don't really care how they got there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it doesn't really matter. They're yeah. Power Rangers. In the deal. show, it takes 10 minutes of the first episode, and then, if even, and then the Power Rangers, there you go. Keep these do Power exactly. Rangers stuff for the whole like, season, reboot next time, you know, just go from there. Exactly. It's like no one cares. They just want to see you do a Megazord. Like, they don't yeah. care about your personal, like, eh, nah. it's like, no, just do the, yeah. do the like, they, thing. They didn't, like, get, they didn't get suited up, I think, until an over an hour in. Nah, that's, that's a loss for my book. I yeah, and then the climax was them completely in the Megazords, which, like, I love Beasts and Giant Robots, but mm. there's just something satisfying about them doing Power Rangers stuff, you know, with their different weapons, and then like upgrade to the Megazords, and then going and then fusing together, and just going straight, going into battle already Megazorded up is just, I don't know, just kind of. It just kind of felt a little, little cheap. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe they should. And that's like, I feel like you got to know how to attack your audience, really. Because mm. it's like, what kind of, you know? Because it's like, what kind of do we have? What can we really run with? Like, you know, it's like, you know, we don't need to see, you know, how we got here. Are we all friends? It's like, yeah, just people with neon colored costumes mm-hmm. beating up like what do they fight monsters or something I don't yeah even, no i've never even seen monster Power of the week type thing yeah but yeah <laughs> like but still like that sounds awesome like yeah. just go with it mm-hmm. <laughs> some gray cgi looking kaiju thing just let's go ape like let's go yeah <laughs> but, um awful. yeah anything else you want to bring up uh that's all i got from here okay so yeah with that we'll see you all next time take care everybody